Given my poor experience with using Sinstrip on the tank, and my uncertainty as to whether or not the Sinstrip would damage the plastic on the front mudguard, I decided to remove the paint by rubbing it down. Even with 60 grit sandpaper it took me a good few hours to get this rubbed down and of course using 60 grit paper has left the surface quite rough. For the top of the mudguard I was really keen to get all traces of the red paint removed. For the underneath I wasn't quite so fussed. So I've just rubbed it enough to give a key for the primer. Even though I'll be using filler primer the surface on the top was too rough, so I gave it a rub down, first with some 200 and then with some 400 wet and dry. For the primer I did use rattle cans as we can see here. This is just off the shelf filler primer from Halfords. In terms of preparation for the rattle cans, I had first warmed these up as it was a nice warm sunny day here in the UK. I did that just by standing them out in the sun for a good half hour before using them. And of course I'd also given the cans a really good shake in probably for at least five minutes to ensure that the paint inside was well mixed. Before painting the top I did put a good couple of thick coats of primer on the bottom. I wasn't looking for a good finish here, I just wanted to cover up all of the old red paint and give a key for the top coat. I did notice some reaction between the primer and the previous red paint, but given its location, I decided to press on. And here I am applying a second coat. As we can see, I am putting this on quite thick. I left the paint on the underside to dry for a couple of days and then moved on to painting the top. What I got here is a little wooden frame mounted on a turntable which makes it very easy to move the workpiece around to get access to all the surfaces to apply the paint. I applied three good coats of the primer filler the intent being that I'd have plenty to work with when it came to flatting it back later on. It's not obvious in the video here, but I was picking up the odd bit of fluff or dust as I was applying the paint. This is something I will need to address before applying the top coats. I made this seat base a couple of years back, fabricated from a mix of plywood and fiberglass. And of course, like the tank and the front mudguard, I needed to remove the old red paint, which with the same concern of not understanding how the sin strip would react with the fiberglass, I went about quite brutally with a disc sander. 40 grit pads actually made quite short work of this. I did follow this up by giving all the external faces a good rubbing down with 180 and then 240 grit wet and dry. In terms of primer for the seat base, I was conscious that my aggressive sanding back of the paint had exposed quite a number of flaws, either little holes or exposed fibres from the fiberglass. To address that, I first put on a layer of plastic primer two coats on reflection one would have sufficed with this coat of primer applied it was actually much easier to see those imperfections this led to a session of applying lots of filler and then of course rubbing it all back again and as we can see here my rubbing back was probably too aggressive again as i've done a good job of removing most of the primer i just applied after applying two more coats of primer i did notice that there were still some very small imperfections so these I dealt with by using some spot putty. I've no doubt it's totally overkill, but I was very keen for all the top coats to be applied to the same colour primer. With that in mind, I applied two coats of the yellow filler primer on top of the grey. To paint the tank, I decided to hang it from the ceiling. Although this gave me access to all the surfaces, it turned out to be not such a good idea. 
Before applying the primer, I gave all the surfaces a really good wiping down with some acetone to remove any traces of oil and grease. And here we can see the downside of hanging the tank from the ceiling in that it kept moving around, which meant of course I had to hold it. My intent here was for the first coat to be quite light. After the first I put on two more coats, generally leaving it about 15 minutes between each coat. This was actually quite a warm day here in the UK and I could probably have gotten away with less time between coats. The finish I got from this primer was frankly bloody awful. It's not really clear here but on the top of the tank that slightly darker shaded area is a very very rough finish. It's almost like the primer was drying before it made contact with the surface of the tank. With all the parts primed I couldn't resist fitting the tank and the seat base on the bike to see how they looked. Next I'll flatten off the primer before getting onto the top coats and I'll cover that off in the next video.